The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is, ninth chapter, text number two, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded in October of 1966 in New York. Radha Vidya, Radha Bhiyam, Pavittam, Idam Uttam, Pratakshavagavam Dhannam, Susutham Kattum Abhayam. This is called uh, Bruce. Come on, sit down. Yes. <coughs> Radha Vidya. Vidya means education. And Raja means king. So what is the king of education? Just like we have got uh, different status of life in the material world. Similarly, in the education also, Somebody is MA, somebody is BA, somebody is school living certificate, somebody three years, somebody four years, there are different grades of education. Now, what is the Samambona? Highest topmost education. This topmost education is <coughs> Krishna consciousness. Topmost education, Raja Vidya. Jivatma Jathatma di Rahasana Raja. Real knowledge is uh, the, what I am. This is real knowledge. Unless you come to this point that what I am, that, that is not knowledge. Uh, just like uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When he began his preaching, his first disciple was Sanatana Goswami. He was a finance minister of uh, Nawab Hussain Shah, but being attracted to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement, he retired from service and he joined Lord Chaitanya. So at that time, when he came to Chaitanya for the first time, his inquiry was that uh, <coughs> what is education? What is education? He was educated, he was highly educated. In those days, Persian language was being taught in England, uh, in India. Just like during British rule, English language was taught to us. Similarly, during Pathan rule, uh, Persian language was state language. Besides that, Sanatana Goswami was a great scholar in Sanskrit also. Still, <coughs> he inquired, so what is education? What is education? Why he inquired like that? Uh, he placed before the Lord that people in general, they call me very educated. And I am also so fool that I accept that I am educated. So the next question is, then why do you think that you are not educated? You are great scholar in Sanskrit, you are great scholar in Persian language, why do you think that you are not educated? He replied that I am thinking not educated because I do not know what I am. I do not know what I am. <coughs> uh, I do not we used to be uh, a suffering member, but this material misery is enforced upon me. Uh, I do not know where from I have come, where I have to go, and still people, they think that I am very much educated, and they designate me that I am a great scholar, and I am satisfied. But I am such a fool that I do not know what I am. Actually, this is the position of our present situation. We are very much uh, proud of our advancement of education, but if you inquire 
from uh, various persons that what he was. Uh, hardly some will answer what he is. Everyone is under the concession of this body. But we are not actually this body. This question we have discussed various times, many times. So, this, uh, after passing this examination that I am not this body, then one who uh, one comes into the real knowledge. That is real knowledge. What I am. That is the beginning. So, the uh, knowledge about which Lord Krishna is now uh, imparting, giving instruction to Arjuna, he says, this is Rajavidya. Rajavidya means to know oneself what he is and act accordingly. That is called Rajavidya. If I do not know what I am, what is my position, then uh, if I am uh, in, uh, mistaken about my situation, then all activities what I am doing, they are all mistaken, they are all illusion. Therefore, this uh, position, Rajavidya means one should know himself what he is and act accordingly. Simply by knowing that I am not this uh, material body, that is not sufficient. Uh, you must act accordingly, that you are not material, you are spiritual. That spiritual activity is called act in Krishna consciousness, and that is called Rajavidya, the king of all education. <coughs> Rajavidya, uh, Rajaguyam, uh, Rajaguyam, Rajaguyam means confidence. Very confident. It is not possible to accept this Krishna consciousness very easily. But uh, by the mercy of Krishna and by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, it is very easily uh, delivered to us through this chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. Uh, Lord Chaitanya has um, discussed a very analytical study of the living entity. Uh, uh, he has analyzed that the living entities, there are innumerable li living entities uh, all over the universe. If you dig earth, you will find many living entities. If you uh, um, Make a study of the air, you will find many living entities. If you go deep into the water, you will find living entities. So all over the universe there are full of different types of living entities. And he has divided all these living entities into two classes. Some are moving and some are not moving. That we can experience. Just like trees, plants, grass, they cannot move. Stone, stone has also life, uh, but it is not developed concept. It is too much covered, uh, stone-like. Similarly, a person, even in human uh, body, if he does not understand his position, he is almost uh, stone-like. Uh, so these are stones, trees, grass, and so many others. They are not moving, living entities. As there are moving entities, just like uh, um, aquatics, bees, birds, reptiles, human beings, demigods, or celestial angels, so many, uh, they are moving. So out of the moving entities, <coughs> uh, very small number are human beings. There are eight million four hundred thousand subspecies of life, out of that, only 400,000 species of life are this human body. So, Lord Chaitanya says, out of these 400,000 species of life, uh, some of them are civilized. And out of many civilized persons, they are actually devoted to the scriptures. Uh, not all. Uh, some of them, they agree that I belong to Christian religion, I belong to Hindu religion, or I belong to Mohammedan religion, but at the present age, mostly they simply claim that I belong to this religion but do not believe in the scripture. Mostly. Uh, 
So those who are believing in the scriptures, they are mostly attracted by past philanthropic activities. They, some of them, those who actually believe that charity is very good thing, and religious means these three things. Jagat dhyana tapa. Jagat dhyana tapa. Jagga means sacrifice. Dana means charity. And tapa means penance. Just like Brahmachari. It is tapasha. Tapasha. The sannyasi. It is tapasha. Tapa. Tapa means penance. Voluntarily accepting very rigid principles of life. That is called tapasha. And charity. Charity means voluntarily giving away his material possession. That is charity. And yoga, sacrifice. Sacrifice, of course, uh, you have no experience, not we, but we uh, all nowadays in the uh, present day, there is no sacrifice, but we get information from such historical literature as Mahabharata. Mahabharata is called history uh, in the Vedic literature. So the kings were performing very big sacrifices, millions of rupees, millions of uh, valuable gold and silver, they were distributed. Oh, that is not possible. That was, a, that was being done by the kings. Kings used to collect tax from the uh, uh, citizens, but at the same time, at the time when they performed sacrifice, they are distributed to all the citizens. All. So that process is not. Now, nowadays, the state simply collects taxes but never distributes. So we have no idea what is yoga. But this yoga is the performance of kings or the heads of the state. And dana are the general householders. And tabasya for brahmachari, sannyasi, vanaprastha. So these are different kinds of rules in religious life. So those who believe in scriptures, they adopt, uh, not all, uh, just I explained that mostly people, they simply accept a certain uh, faith uh, and, and mouth, in mouth only. Actually they do not do anything. Do not do anything. Oh. So, uh, and out of that many, millions of people like that, uh, somebody are religious, really religious, who perform the sacrifice, charity, and penance. So, hmm. Lord Chaitanya says, out of many millions of persons who are actually engaged in charity and, uh, and the penance and sacrifice, some of them become in perfect knowledge what he is. So this knowledge is just see how he is uh, making analytical study of the living entities, uh, beginning from 800,000 million of species of life, he is selecting only few human civilized life, then uh, addicted to the uh, I'm going to say certain kind of faith, then uh, extracting them who are actually believing, and then those who are actually believing out of them, uh, those who are uh, sacrificing, making charities, and uh, uh, adopting penances, out of many millions of like persons like that, some of them are actually knowledge what he is. You find in your country also there are many foundations that are making charities. But uh, hardly you will find amongst them that he knows that what he is. Uh, so, out of many millions of these uh, religious persons, uh, some of them know what he is. I am not this body. Uh, now, simply theoretically knowing that I am not this body, I am spirit soul, uh, that is not perfect. You have to actually become liberated from the material entanglement. That is called mukti, liberation. Ah. So out of many thousands of persons who are in the knowledge what they are or what he is, some of them are actually liberated. Liberated. 
And out of many thousands of people who are liberated, they can't understand what is Krishna. So Krishna understanding is not a very easy job. But uh, Krishna is so kind <coughs> because he knows that in this age, in this age of Kali, uh, it will be very difficult for a person to become liberated under the process. First to become civilized, then to become religious, then to perform these charity sacrifices, then come to the platform of knowledge, then after coming to the platform of knowledge, you uh, come to the platform of liberation, and after being liberated, you can know what is Krishna. That is stated in Bhagavad Gita. Brahma Bhuta Prasanna Atma Nasotati Nakankhati Sama Sarvesh Bhuteshu Madhvakti Ravati Param. This is the sign of liberation. A man who is liberated, his signs are uh, explained in the Bhagavad Gita. Brahma Bhuta Prasanna Atma. His first symptom is that is very happy. One who is liberated, his first symptom is that he will never find him morose, he is happy. Prasannatma, naso tati, nakang tati, he has no anxiety. Oh, oh, this thing I am got. I have to secure this thing, this bill I have to pay, oh, this I have to do, this. so many anxieties, are full of anxiety. So he has no anxiety. <coughs> and then, uh, does it mean because he has an anxiety, he is very rich man? No, not necessarily. He may be the poorest man. Uh, then he has no anxiety. Then he has no lamentation. He does not think I am poor. Why he should think poor? Uh, poor, when I think that I am this material, uh, some, I am a uh, part of this material world, I, am, uh, I, am, I haven't got this position, material position, then I think I am poor or rich. But one who is liberated from the material concepts of her life, then he has nothing to do what he is possessing, what is not possessing. He has nothing to do. That is liberation. Ah. If one is free from the material conception of life, then factually either he possesses or not possesses, he has nothing to do with them. Therefore, his prasannatma, his joyful. Oh. I have nothing to lose, nothing to gain. I am completely separate from here. Oh. This is liberation. And samasarvishu bhuteshu, and his vision of life is that he does not see anybody rich, poor, or fool, or educated, or so many dualities there are in the material world. He has nothing. His vision is completely on the spiritual platform. He sees that every living entity is a part and parcel of Krishna. Therefore, he tries to take them back to Krishna consciousness. He has no distinction that he is uh, Brahmin, he is Sudra, he is Indian, he is American, or he is black, he is white, or he is educated, he is non educated. No. Everyone should come to Krishna consciousness. That is his viewpoint. Some of Sarvishu Bhuteshu. When one is qualified in that way, then man bhakti lavati parav, Lord Krishna says, then he becomes eligible for becoming a pure devotee of Krishna. So, practically, this process uh, under regulative principle is not very easy, <coughs> especially in this age. Uh, in this age, the description of the people are that prayana alpayish, their duration of life is very short. Huh? And prayana alpayish, huh? mandya, mandya is very slow, huh? sleeping out of twenty-four hours, sleeping twelve hours. Huh? And out of twelve hours, huh? they are busy in earning money, ten hours. Huh? Then two hours left. What he can do for spiritual understanding? There is no time. So manda, samanda matayo, and if somebody has got uh, some intention to make spiritual progress, then uh, there are so many pseudo-spiritual, uh, I mean to say, societies, 
they are entrapped by some of them. So, Manda, Manda, Matayu, Sumanda, Matayu, Manda, Bhadya, and most of them are unfortunate. Unfortunate. Most of them, if you count the population taken statistics, they are so unfortunate that the primary principles of life, eating, sleeping, defending and mating, they have got sufficient arrangement. Oh. These are only primary principles. They are available even in animal life. Oh. So, but in this age, even this primary principle, no one has got shelter, no one has uh, arrangement for eating nicely, no one has got uh, mating, uh, uh, wife, uh, uh, everyone is afraid of when is there will really be war declared and I will have to go to the war field. This is the position. Manna Sumanna Mandayo Mandu Bhagya, unfortunate. And Upadrita, in spite of all this, he is always disturbed with diseases and so many other things is disturbed. This is the position. Therefore, uh, Lord Krishna, he thought that if these people are allowed, if they are to come to the point of liberation under the regulative process, uh, it is impossible. So, out of his causeless mercy, he came as Lord Chaitanya. Uh, Lord Chaitanya and distributed these perfect, the highest perfection of life. Uh, ecstasy, spiritual ecstasy, by chanting this Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. This is practical. This is practical. It does not depend whether you are now liberated or not liberated, what is your position, what is your condition, doesn't matter. Just come and take part in it and you will feel spiritual ecstasy. That's what it is called. Raja Vidya, Raja Gujyam, Pavitram, Pavitram, and it's very pure. Ah, anyone who takes to this process, ah, he becomes immediately purified. Or the purification process begins immediately. Immediately. Ah, pavitram. And Uttamam, Uttamam means the highest or transcendent. And last day we have already explained, Puttamam. Uh, so, uh, the, the commentator, he says, Aprādha aprārabdha phalam pāpam kūtam vījaṁ phalan mukham krameinaiva praliyate viṣṇu bhakti uh, viṣṇu bhakti ratātmana. Viṣṇu uh, bhakti ratātmana. That means one who is in this Krishna consciousness, then they uh, gradually he is the seed of all reaction of his sin that becomes uh, vanquished. Just like in the Bhagavad Gita we have studied, just like, just like in the fire, if you put anything, uh, you go on putting everything, it makes into, turns it into ashes. Similarly, this fire of Krishna consciousness, as soon as it is bigger, then uh, all our reactions of sinful activities in our past life. Uh, mind that our suffering is due to sinful activities, and sinful activities are due to our ignorance. Uh, ignorance. Uh, sinful activities are done by persons who do not know what is what. Uh, uh, just like a child. A child does not know uh, what is the result of catching fire? Because he is ignorant. But as soon as the child catches fire, his hand becomes burnt immediately. The fire does not allow any concession for the child. We relax as fire. Similarly, we do not know how this material world is going on. What are the laws? Who is the controller? how it is being controlled. Due to our ignorance, we act in some way, but nature is so stringent that it will never excuse you. Either you do it knowingly or unknowingly. Just the same example. The child does not know that the fire will burn. But if the child catches the fire, the fire will not excuse because it is child. 
Therefore, uh, ignorance is the cause of suffering. Uh, and one should be uh, put into proper knowledge. Uh, proper knowledge means to know things as they are. What I am, what is this world, uh, what is God, what is our relation, these things we should know. Uh, not that simply becoming a technical expert or some uh, uh, departmental expert we become a, a man of knowledge. That is not knowledge. Here is knowledge. You should know what you are and how you act. And this knowledge can be achieved in this human form of life, not in the animal form of life. Therefore, uh, to give you knowledge, to give you proper direction, uh, there are so many scriptures in all parts of the civilized world. They should not be neglected. Uh, the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Krishna Bhulya Ji, Anabi Bohimog Ji, Krishna Bhuli Gela, Atay Krishna Ved Purana Karila. The meaning of this stanza is that people are forgetful since time immemorial about his relationship with the Supreme Law. Forgetful. Bhuligela. Bhuligela means he has forgot. Atay Krishna Ved Purana Karila. Therefore, uh, Lord has sent so many representatives to give them this literature, this scripture. So we should take advantage of these uh, scriptures, especially the Bhagavad Gita, which is accepted as the prime scripture in the modern world, and you'll find uh, everything nicely. You can put your arguments, you can uh, try to understand with your knowledge, with your intelligence, everything will be clear. Uh, so we should take advantage of this Bhagavad Gita and our uh, power of intaking will be increased if we begin with this transcendental sound vibration. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. Thank you very much.